All right, so we are back and we went ahead and we ultra torqued each one of these. And for the sake of speed, I'm gonna go ahead and grab our handy dandy uh, impact driver. And, and I'm actually, it's not even clicking. I'm just, I've already kind of seated them by hand to make sure that they're not cross threaded. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and ah there's one pin. okay so we've got that and then we're going to come over here we're going to grab our this is a 12 millimeter torque wrench and we are going to set the torque initially um, the book calls for and i think this is the same thing that hazley uses um, it says 20 i want to say it's 23 53 73 um, I go to the same 73, but I take it up in, in extra steps, um, just because I've got the time and I'm going to take it up as evenly across the board as possible. And also when we come back after these are all clearanced and we've got the ultra slick on all of the bearing surfaces, I'm going to go back and I am going to recheck all of these things to make sure they're tight. You know, if there's any uh, assembly lube that's gotten in between the two surfaces, I want to make sure that those have you know, had a chance to squish out and it doesn't affect the final torque. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and set this to 20 on the torque wrench and then we will get rolling. Okay, so we have set the torque wrench to 20 feet pounds and so I'm just going to take that and I'm going to pull till it clicks. Mmm, that one's a long one. Okay. And normally if I know that they're going to be that long to pull down, I will go through like this one. I could see a gap there. And I will go through and I will snug them down a little at a time so that I am tightening them evenly. Okay, so that was our 23. We're gonna go up to the next step and then we'll keep going up. I will come back after they are all torqued down. Okay, so we just finished torquing them down. We did 23, 43, 63, 73. That's the route that we did. And some of them, sometimes it, it'll feel like it's pulling forever and it's just not clicking. Um, they will click. Uh, it's just, you know, everything's settling in in there. And now we're going to, oh, and, and the other thing is, I oh, as you're doing that, this is kind of basic stuff, but try to pull it in one pull to the torque. So one fluid motion. Um, if you don't, what I've done, because there was one that just pulled forever and I ran out of throw. And so what I did is I just came back to it and... I loosened them and restarted on that cap. So what we're going to do now is we're going to reverse rotations and we will now loosen the caps and check the plastic gauge out. All right, well, I'll see you at that point. All right, we're back to it. And one of the things with these guys that I've noticed is it's kind of like the main bearings, except the rod bearings seem to like to stick to the crank a whole lot more like that um, so I have had some success getting them off there if you just kind of wobble it a little bit yeah exactly like that so you come back and you wobble it a little bit and and check it beforehand because you don't want to wind up dropping a main bearing I mean a rod bearing down the hole uh, I've done that once. It was not fun. So we're going to go ahead. This is still clean cap surface, except with the plastic gauge on there. So we're going to go ahead and drop number four there. We're going to come back. We're going to grab number three. We're going to wobble him. And voila. Okay, so we're going to set him down. And then we're going to grab our plastic gauge. Um, we're going to come over here and see if we can get right down. Top of it, so three and a half thousandths. Um, 
So we're, it's kind of fuzzy there. Let's see if I can hold it still. So we're not quite a two, but we're pretty much at three, but it's four is too far. So we're pretty much, we're, we're looking pretty good. So if we go to the skinniest part of this guy, which would probably be somewhere right in there. I'm going to say that we are, we're right at that three and a half on our skinniest part of this. And that even may be, some of that is if you, let's see if it'll focus. Oh, it's such a shiny surface. It's having a hard time there. But you can see that some of that outside line is, oh, there we go. Um, some of that outside line is where it's lifted off of this surface and it's transferred to the the rod cap. So we're at pretty much three thousandths across that, which means we're within the tolerances for that three and a half thousandths. So let's go over here. Okay, so same thing. We've got, we can see where some of that, you can see the squish line there. Um, some of that has peeled off, but you can still tell where it sat. And if I stick it down there and I look from up above, um, the skinniest part on this is just a shade under three thousandths. So we're probably at like 3.25 thousandths um, on that guy. So all of our clearances check out. They were all around three to three and a half thousandths. So what's going to happen now? Um, we're going to, we're going to jump ahead and I'll give you a little glimpse. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to clean these surfaces again. So I'm going to take my, my little plastic scraper because we're not going to use anything nasty on our, our crank and kind of come in. We're going to clean the plastic gauge off. We'll clean the plastic gauge off our caps over there. We'll clean everything back up meticulously. And then we'll take the, the Permatex ultra slick. Um, which is what we've done with the rest of these guys. That's why it's bleeding red everywhere. Um, and then we will we'll go ahead and we will painstakingly after the clear and after we clean our gloves and all of our things again that we're going to be using, um, we will go ahead and assemble these the final time with the, the Permatex Ultra Slick. All right, so we're going to go ahead and skip to that point and pick it up once we are we're starting to ultra slick everything. Okay, so we've got everything cleaned up here and what we're gonna do next is we're going to create a little spl space um, so you can take a, a little something soft, a little piece of wood. Again, this is all cleaned up and so, and I won't do it till I'm actually have two hands free for this, but we're gonna knock the piston back down a little bit. You can also tap on the top the little piston skirt down there and we're talking very gentle this is not we're not brutalizing we're not doing anything crazy and we're doing it controlled so that we don't have this thing flopping around and uh you know scuffing anything um again no need to just get out of hand here we just take it slow and steady and that will help prevent some errors long term so we're going to knock those guys back a little bit so that we can get to the lower uh, well, the upper bearing shell, and then we're going to put our ARP Ultra Slick on it. And before we button everything up, we will go ahead and show you what that looks like all slipped up, slicked up and uh, ready for our torque. And then we'll go over our torque spec again. All right, we'll <clears throat> catch you in just a second. Okay, so here's a great little reminder. Um, we just tap these things down and we pull them apart. And lo and behold, here on the Number four, there was a little bit of crap in there. So as like fastidious as we have been about making sure these things are clean, there was still a little bit of crap. So we went through and cleaned the back out, and now we're going to be proceeding on with getting the ultra slick on them. But it's just a little reminder that you never can spend too much time on cleanliness. Um, when these things go together the last time, you just want them to be as clean as possible. So we'll catch you in just a little bit again. There's just a little reminder. Okay, so here we are. Um, we've gone through, we had everything cleaned. We very carefully ultra-slicked everything. 
Um, we have the number four bearing cap here. And so what we're about to do is we're about to very carefully tap that uh, uh, piston and rod assembly back up into place. And we'll be, I'll, I'll be using two hands because I'm going to be guiding it up in there. So it just gently comes to rest on that. And then we'll be taking this number four cap and putting it right on there. So we're going to go ahead and pause and then we'll come back with both three and four tapped up in there. And then we will drop the rod cap on. All right, so we're back to our caps here. Um, this is now number three. So we've got one, two, three. And what we've done is we've gone ahead and tapped that rad back up into place. And one, one little helpful note that might be good is that as you're tapping that back up into place, you can hear the tone change as you guide that upper rod bearing half and rod onto the journal there and it seats, it, it changes tone. So just listen for that as you're tapping it in and that you, you'll know that you've got it about where you need to be. So I've grabbed it by the two bolts and I'm just very gently going to set that guy back down into place and make sure that it's looking good. And then we're gonna come over here. We're gonna do the same. We're gonna grab number four and we have stamped these um, so that we knew exactly what they were. So we're going to take number four. And again, we're watching those machine blips, the tangs that are in there. Um, and then we're going to seat those down. So, and again, for the sake of speediness, I'm going to take this guy. And we are going to just bring those down. Mm. All right. Okay, so now we're going to switch back to our torque specs. And again, these are stock rod bolts. They're not ARPs. That'd be a different torque spec. Um, you can also use torque plus angle. Um, what I, I We have used just straight out the 73 as our final torque. So we go 23, 43, 63, and then 73. And what I do is I never let that be the final thing. So I always come through and I check to see any of them have loosened up. You know, sometimes you get a wad of something in the bottom as, as you're tightening them down or anything. When in doubt, recheck it, recheck it, recheck it. So once I get done with these, I'll leave it overnight as I put the cam and the tappets in and I'll come back tomorrow and I'll check the rods and the mains just to make sure that nothing has moved. I think a lot of the people that say that the straight up torque spec doesn't work, uh, you know, I think it's probably because something, you know, there's bad luck that goes around all the time. So I'd say you probably, probably was just something was just maybe not quite right. And that's how, that's how we've done it. And we've, we've had pretty good luck with that. So that's where we're at. We're going to go ahead and torque these down again. We're going to go 23, 43, 63, 73 on these guys. Um, do your homework. As with everything here, this is supposed to be helpful. I, no hate mail, please. None of that crap. Um, don't have room for that in our lives. We're just trying to be helpful. Do your homework. See what you want to use on your motor. All right. So the next thing that we'll be moving on to is we're going to be doing cam install with tappets. And uh, then we'll be checking piston protrusion. And before we get there, we'll go ahead and do, we'll measure the side to side lash on all of the um, rods here.